Welcome back, 0K fans, to Nanolith Zedan. I remain your host, Shadow Fury 333, and the last match for tonight is going to be between Corvus Cordex and Anarchid on Adansonia. Which is one of the prettier maps. It's a nice island map with water everywhere. You often see Amphibs used, and Anarchid is going to be going for Amphib while Corvus Cordex is going for the Clokebot Factory, so Clokey's Amphib and Early Ducks, as always. Although we did see in a game a couple weeks ago on Onyx Cauldron that it's actually quite possible to beat the Amphib Factory with the Clokeybot Factory, you just have to use not Glaives. Basically anything but Glaives. Glaives are worthless. Everything else does wonders, but Glaives are kind of worthless. However, Corvus Korok starting out with a lot of Glaives, going to Warriors as well. Not sure if they suspect the use of of Ducks, or if they're just deciding, eh, I'll have Warriors too. For the defense. I don't know. We'll find out. At any rate, we do have... Corvus Corax is just not really building a whole lot. They're mostly going for... Well, they have their economy coming up. They're focusing... Well, not that much less heavily on their production. Not sure what's going on there. Oh, the commander's high priority. That's what's going on. That's why they're producing slowly. Anarchid, on the other hand, was already five glaives going for a pretty heavy assault. And to the side, too. Just to double check. Just to make sure in case Corvus Corax decides to go building off anything to the sides. They can't easily do that. Which is a pretty smart idea, I gotta say. Corvus Corax will be able to at least prevent any easy expansion attempts. However, Anarchid... Oh, that duck is gonna commit suicide. That duck's gonna die. Well, it would die, but it's gonna go through the water, so it'll be fine. But if it didn't go through the water, it'd be dead. However, it also does not scout out these glaives. Does Anarchid know radar at all? Nope, they have no idea. So Corvus Corax will be able to get some damage dealt. This is going to be tricky, though. Three of their glaives are going to die immediately. And now that they know there are ducks, they'll probably realize, yep, warriors. Good idea. Go for the warriors. Just stick with that. Oh, Anarchid moving out of position. Almost out of position. The ducks still managed to get in. These glaives have to avoid them. That's their only hope. Avoid the ducks. Get around behind everything. Kill as much as they can. Oh, the, and the defender being... Very helpful, actually. And the Glaives... Oh, wrong move! The Glaives needed to move towards the Defender. They needed to continue along getting rid of all these wind generators. That was their only hope. That was their only hope of doing anything meaningful. I don't know if they turned around to avoid the Defender or they turned around to avoid... to get back to the wind, the metal extractor, but those ducks, that was gonna kill them. Glaives get one shot by ducks. That's why I said, use anything but Glaives. At least until ducks stop being produced in such large quantities. Once that happens, then you can start using glaives again if you get boys or whatever else. But against ducks, no. Absolutely not. Do not use glaives. Use warriors. That's how you do it. Or use ca or use rockos. That works too. Either way. Just not glaives. Anything but glaives. However, Corvus Cordax did manage to convert that into a decent energy advantage. Not quite metal. Still gonna get their metal, but not as quickly as Anarchid. Part of that being that Conscious build at 7.5 metal per second rate, while Conjurers only build at a 5 metal per second rate. So it's a lot easier for Anarchid to expand using their workers than it is for Corvus Corax. However, Corvus Corax with a very nice army composition advantage, these warriors could pretty much just walk over Anarchid's base right now. There's nothing that would stop them. Like, boys are just now being produced, so actually by the time they're there, something will be there to stop them. But... Right now, no. If they could just magically teleport inside of Anarchid's base, or be transported, although Corvus Corax does not have any gunship plant, and nor will they likely in any time soon, but if they could somehow suddenly appear inside of the center of Anarchid's base, Anarchid would be dead. Like, completely dead. They're, they've got nothing to defend against. Nothing effective enough to deal with three warriors rushing them down like this. Our ducks coming in over to the side. Not gonna do much, I'm afraid. Gonna try. But managed to survive. Does manage to get rid of the defender, but otherwise, n no, no real effect. How did, how did you not get, oh, that is bottom pathable. I didn't notice that. There is actually no way for boss to go up that particular hill. Which does give Anarchid the time they need to build the boys they need to keep out those, those warriors. So close. 
Although, as we can see right here, the conch is building up a bunch of tidal generators, because why not? You might as well. Also, just notice the tidal generator overdrive is at the bottom of the water, not on the surface. That might be fixed. I think that's a fixed. I think that's fixed already, but only in development version. Anyhow, probably shouldn't be pointing that out too much. Anarchid, oh, Anarchid doing the thing that I'm sure Corvus Gorax really wish, kind of wishes they had. Building up gunships to get Valkyries. No scallops, though. No scallop drops. Not sure what they're going to be dropping. But if Corvus Gorax had built up a gunship plant and a bunch of Valkyries, these warriors would be far more effective than they are right now, because right now they are doing nothing and going into basically a dead end. There's nothing they can do from here. This cliff face is too much. They can't go up there, so they have to go back around after killing all this, going through a choke point, which Anarchid can control almost entirely. And Anarchid is boys as well, and they don't care. They can go wherever. Well, I guess they can just, it's more they can go around the side here. Anarchid's forces have no option of going through the water. Whereas, sorry, Corvus Gorax's forces have no option. Anarchid's forces have all the options. That's, that's how they play. Speaking of which, coming out of the water, the ducks. These deadly missile firing ducks. As if real ducks weren't bad enough. Getting rid of a lot of Corvus Gorax's economy over to the south, and the commander probably as well. At the same time, the warriors over to the south, the northeast, one of them does go down. But the other two able to basically wipe out the northeast base. And Anarchid takes that as a cue to run away. They probably could have had a commander kill as well, but nope. Looks like they want to run away, regroup, maybe try to defend that a bit. But this is the problem. How are the warriors going to get out of there? Actually, it looks like without too much trouble, come to think of it. But yeah, the question is, what are these Valkyries transporting? Oh, transporting conscious. So that's a pretty clever idea. And get it on top of this hill and generally move them around quickly. That's pretty ingenious. Unfortunately, Corpus Corax is not going down and using these warriors to try to attack the main base or really do anything with them. It's kind of just keeping them in the northeast. I don't know if that's intentional or if they're just not really focusing on them. I mean, what are they focusing on right, right now? No, they're not focusing on them at all. Oh, wait. Of course, Corax. What is Corvus Corax focusing on? Nope. Not even looking at them at all. Nothing to do with what they want to look at. Like... At this point, though, it looks like Anarchid... They're going to have to rethink their army composition again. What advantage... Sorry, Corvus Corax. Keep, why do you keep getting that confused? Corvus Corax is going to have to rethink their, their army composition because Anarchid... They aren't really cooperating. There are a lot of ducks. There are no rockers and Corax Corax aside. They're still building a lot of glaives. Their, their build order has not changed since the start of the game. Like, they're still producing the exact same units as before. They actually haven't changed up the amount of production. They haven't added caretakers or anything. They're building some economy, but they haven't built up any caretakers. They haven't built up a whole lot of workers. They're not playing... Okay, now they're finally getting the caretakers, but they're not really using their economy as effectively as they could be. They do have the advantage economically, but it's not translating into any production advantage. And they're about to lose the warriors inside of Anarchid's base. So, not really the best time. Also, slightly overproducing these. Unless they're planning on reclaiming, but I don't know where they'd be reclaiming from. They only have the one worker, and it's about to die. Or maybe. I don't know. This Stardust might just make sure... No, it'll, okay. It'll live. It'll live. The ducks wisely retreating after four of their number die with no results. However, Anarchid... Oh, you know what? Anarchid could... Well, if they lose this assault here, which looks like they probably will, actually... That's still going to be a bit of a blow. It's going to be difficult for them to deal with Corvus Quarks's base, but I don't think they care. Why does Anarchid care? All they have to do is just walk around, build up everything else, and they're good. And they have what they need. They're transporting around conscious. It's no problem. They can just reclaim everything on the tops of hills and then go down and build up whatever they like. I mean, Anarchid could easily get their economy set up very healthily. And while Corvus Quarks does have the caretakers, which will help, there's way too much build power for the amount of metal being used right now by Corus, Corus Corax. Bit of future-proofing, I suppose. Oh, at the same time, though, Anarchy does lose their commander, so that is something. Corvus Corax does make it a lot harder to expand with impunity. 
That's the main thing. Anarchist. Actually, no, Anarchist's economy was not that strong. That actually is also a bit of a blow, keeping Corvus Corax with an economic advantage and managing to get rid of a fair amount of the army coming out of Anarchist as well. Corvus Corax is not going... They're not going to go down. Not easily. Like, this game is kind of evened out. I know I say that with Corvus Corax having a 10 metal per second advantage, but let's be fair here, it is Anarchist. Like, you kind of need that. Still, the Corvus Corax with a nice composition. Anarchid, however, will be setting up the Grizzly, and they do have the Rapiers and the Boys, so... Rapiers will get rid of the Glaives, no problem. The Warriors aren't going to be much of a threat, because the Rapiers probably won't get close enough to be threatened by them. Like, Banshees would be useless. This is where Gremlins would come in very handy, but Corvus Corax... Ah, knows that! There we go, there's the Gremlins, they have that set up. So, Corvus Corax got their composition just fine. However, they have not rebuilt the Southeast. They really should. I don't know why they aren't. I don't know if they're scared of it. I don't know if they're... I think they're a team game player. And one thing I've noticed with team game players... I'd have to check. But one thing I've noticed about team game players is that they tend to be... A bit more hesitant to build up. Especially outside of what could be considered like their main line. Because in team games, in large team games, people kind of just have this one section that they are responsible for. And that's it. And other people deal with other things. And it, often works out to being different points on a line, like different ch chunks of a line. And so Corpus Corax, on their chunk of the line, they've definitely got that sorted out. It's just that there's more map that they haven't taken again. They took it once, they haven't taken it again. And this is one thing I always, 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 always say, when you lose metal extractors, as soon as possible, rebuild those metal extractors. As soon as it is even remotely safe to do so. Even if it seems unsafe to do so, if they're alive for half a minute, they've paid for themselves in most cases. If it's a plus two extractor, yeah, half a minute they pay for themselves. So it doesn't matter if it seems too risky, do it. Go to the thing, do the thing, it'll work fine. Don't worry about it. At any rate, Anarchid is getting that grizzly. Just the one grizzly so far though. But also managing to get quite a bit of, of economic harassment going in here. And once again, this has not been rebuilt, which like I said, I just, this is the thing, good players, like, the difference between a good player and a great player is a great player will always make sure that they have rebuilt every single metal extractor they can. They are always focusing on making sure they have as many metal extractors as possible, and that if they lose any, they, it does not stay lost for long. And Anarchid manages to finally rebuild this, although a lot of that was they had to fight through some stuff. And that took a little bit longer than it should have as well. But at the same time, Anarchid with the reclaim is getting the economic advantage and also building up quite a bit of this here. And now, Corvus Corax trying to finish this off. I'm getting rid of this northwest side. Nice assault coming in from Corvus Corax, though. I mean, Anarchid... Oh, these Banshees are going into their deaths. Actually, everything's going into their deaths. The Gremlin Warrior combination is very effective here. Are dealing with gunships? Yeah, the, I mean, the Gremlins get rid of the Rapiers. The Warriors and Gremlins combined get rid of the Banshees. So not a whole lot's going to be much of a threat here. And actually, as the Rapiers get close... They're just going to be melted by the warriors. And melted by the gremlins, and everything melts them. It's like hot butter in the sun. Hot butter on the sun. Have you ever put butter on the sun? I wouldn't recommend it. You probably would be incinerated well before you managed to do that. But if you did, it would actually just atomize. It wouldn't so much melt. And that's what happened to those rapiers. Those rapiers got atomized. Sort of. Enough of them got atomized that they ended up falling to the ground and then becoming useful reclaim. But yeah, Corvus Corax's assault here, this is... This could actually take the game. I mean, it's... Anarchid, all they have right now is a few bands of raiders going around the map, which, as long as they don't actually deal damage, Corvus Corax isn't easy to assault. They have a stronger economy than Anarchid. And this assault force coming in here, it just needs to get through the one grizzly. There's one slight problem that it needs to get through. It just needs to be combined arms! Ah! Go in with the combined arms! Go with all the forces, not just the warriors! Do everything! Darn it, Corvus Corax! Do all the things! You have this game in the bag! Just send everything into Anarchid's base and you win! It is that simple. It is literally that simple. It's a little late now, though. If the ducks get killed, at least, it might still work. But no, they're not- Why? You- This game is yours! Corvus Corax, you could win this game right now! You could literally win this game right now, and you didn't. And I hate to be vindictive, but it's like- these forces are right here. This is more than enough of an army to get rid of the gremlin. Sorry, to get rid of the grizzly. Get rid of all the ducks. There's nothing in here. Absolutely. And certainly nothing that would be able to stand up to this army. 
I mean, at the very least, Corvus Grux is getting rid of a lot of the side forces, getting rid of a lot of the ducks, and getting rid of a lot of the army that Anarchid has scattered around the map. And they do have the economic advantage. Corvus Grux is still ahead economically. The problem is that now their glaives and warriors are separated. And the ducks, like I said, destroy glaives. The warriors need to be there for the ducks, for duck control. And the glaives need to be there for everything else control. But there's still an army of glaives coming in here, which... Actually, there's a lot of glaives. There's dozens upon dozens of glaives. Three dozen glaives. Three dozen glaives. That could easily melt anything Anarchid has right now. Even the ducks. There aren't... There are nowhere near enough ducks to deal with this. There's six ducks? Yeah. There'll be 30 glaives left after the first volley. Those ducks are rolled... 31. 32 glaives left after the first volley. These glaives could win the game. Right now. And they are acting to do so. 26 going in, 4 will die immediately, and then the ducks melt. Okay, there we go. Corvus Corax might have a way back in. Anarchid, on the other hand, though, Anarchid's just got... They're just sort of sitting around. Like, they're... They're rebuilding. You know, they got their metal extractors, building them back up. They have a lot of energy infrastructure in the sea, so they're good for energy. Just need to get a couple more caretakers. They should be, should be fine, or start building up with a gunship plant. If they add gunship plants, if they add... Oh, that's just really tough. If they add brawlers, they should be fine. That's about the only unit I can think of that would work for the gunship plant right now. But yeah, if they start building up brawlers, yeah, why not? Might as well. Or just build up another caretaker. Or use this conch to help assist. And they are, in fact, doing that, building up another caretaker. They get their economy back. I mean, Corvus Corax's army, while strong and numerous, isn't that... It's kind of specialized. And that specialization could be a problem. A few good scallops, as we are seeing right now. That could do the trick. And Corvus Corax has switched to more of a Zeus-focused army. And then once again, focus more on map and economy control. Trying to push forward with that economy. Not going for the quick win. Which I find a little confusing, but that's a bit of a personal style thing. However, part of it is also, I am the spectator. I can see this is what they have. Like, Corvus Corax is a massive advantage as far as units go. Like, one that's massive enough that they could deal with most of this without dying. Not this, not with the half dozen glaives that came in here. But, I mean, with the three dozen glaives that they have here. They could easily deal with this stuff. And mansion get rid of another conch. Ooh, they get rid of this northeast. Northeast is undefended. As long as Corvus Corax is paying attention to this, goes in... No, they're not. They're not paying attention at all. They're focused elsewhere, and they're going to lose those glaives. Which could have been a very effective assault force here, getting rid of 10 metal percent. Like, that would have halved Anarchid's economy right there. That might have taken the game right there. Just for giving Anarchid pause. But basically going, oh shoot, I've got nothing. I have basically no economy. Barely enough to run one factory. So, yeah. That was a tough thing. I mean, that's more a micro thing, just pay attention. A lot of it, I suppose in general, you just should just keep moving. Like, whenever possible, if you're running away with a bunch of units from an army, don't stop moving. Don't, like, set one order and then leave. Set orders. I keep queuing orders, until, although it doesn't look like Corvus Corax is really queuing many orders. Just keep queuing move orders. Just, like, Q, 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 holding shift. Go through the, like, go as many move orders as you can in a direction. Doesn't matter. Any direction, as long as they keep moving. Fast units like Glaives rely on their speed, so they rely on continuous movement. As long as they keep moving, you're fine. Same time. Okay, the south's getting torn to shreds. Enough razors should be able to stop. I mean, there's enough defenses to stop that from getting to the main base too much. And as long as... Okay, the grizzly is really priority here. And as long as... If the scallop can go down thanks to Zeus, and the grizzly go down thanks to Glaze, there's only so many glaives. There's only 11 glaives left. I mean, if that grizzly goes down, Corpus Corax has this game. I mean, that's... That's kind of... Yeah, the grizzly is going to go down. So Corvus Korax should be able to take this game as long as they're attacking at all, really. As long as they don't stop. If they keep going, they're fine. And they stopped. Although Anakin's still throwing in the towel, so that works regardless. Corvus Korax wins this. I still feel like they could have won it far sooner. They were, they were playing... By playing safe, they were actually kind of playing risky, which is weird. But yeah, there's a few small things where it's like, you could have won this game way earlier. Because Anarchid, with those brawlers, was actually... Like I said, the brawlers were what they needed. If they had enough brawlers, like three or four brawlers, that would have torn everything apart. And I don't know why Anarchid wasn't building. They had a lot of excess at some point. And indeed, they accessed a few hundred metal. That's not even a single brawler. Nah, that's fine. 
they still still could have had more brawlers to work with, and then that would have more easily dealt with Corvus Corax's army. And it's just the assault in the back. It's hard, it's hard to get through these defenses. That's the one thing. The amount of defense Corvus Corax had, it was a bit... A lot of stuff that they did was a little bit preemptive, and you can tell the way they built up that they're playing team game style. I mean, it worked out. They did manage to have enough of an economy overall in the map. It, they didn't lose too much by not expanding as much as they could have. Like, this map, you can expand to the point where you have, like, 50, 60 metal per second. Just off of stuff on the map. Like, just off of metal like points. Not even reclaim or overdrive. So, this can this map can go absolutely ballistic. This can go, like, to the moon as far as it can. Okay, 60 is not that high, but it can, you can easily go way higher than that if you're taking the map. Like, Corpus Corpus had 30... Two metal per second without overdrive, and that was with like half of what they could have taken. Especially given that they were getting a lot of control at the center, they could have easily taken this and possibly this, or maybe this, and then it would have been even more. Like that's twelve right there. This is another ten on top of that. It's twenty-two on top of that, and then another so twenty-six right there. Could have easily been like seventy, eighty metal. If, especially if they put energy around them and got overdrive, easily seventy, eighty metal at the map split in half. But yeah, another player really expanded as much as they could have. I couldn't think of it. Yeah, Anarchy didn't really expand that much. They kind of did at the start, but then... Corvus Corax did manage... To, I mean, there's some good harassment going on. Corvus Corax going through the center, going through the side here at the very start of the game helped out. Taking out the Northeast, that also helped out. That could have been more, uh, done again a bit more effectively. But yeah, taking out the Northeast helped... Quite a bit early on. Because even for Amphib, it's kind of tough to get over there, really. You have to still go around either down here or over around the back. It's still a long path. It's only really gunships and planes that have an easy way, or recon commanders, that have an easy way to get to this island. Anyhow, that is that. So I hope you enjoyed that. And that is it for me tonight. So thank you all for watching, and have a good night.